faith, cheers for an entry kit, and a stammering poet. Well, you don't get any again. I'm also an activist. I've worked in the disabled people's movement for a long time. I start with an impairment. As a stammering poet and as a uh, activist, I'm of the, the opinion it's really important that disabled people should say what disabled people want to say, when they want to say it, and how. They should talk about what they like, when, and how people like. And in particular, when we say what we like and uh, what we like, we usually don't need people to say to us what we need. This first poem is about interference. It's, um, it's about people who speak for us instead of allowing us to speak for ourselves. And it's about what I like. I like cake. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's some sympathy for that here. But I love it. I love cake. I love cake so much. Sitting here on a sunny day, coffee and cake, flapjacks, apple and sultana, the dominant bake sugar and seasoning, resting, eating, eating cake, nothing but cake. Cake so fancy, cake so dreamy, cake so moist and cake so creamy. <laughs> I love cake, custard cream ice and fond and declare, and the sun is sun boots and shining on me today. On this current bond, I sit, I rest, eating cake, being is twelve and barber, chocolate muffin, it's all the world. Reverie. Revalley. Here from the fucking charity cafe. Say rattling, cutting, slashing, spiling the baking of my cake. The National Trust in Macmillan mornings comes with the sternest morning. Your model, the tragedy in your calling, the asking for the pittance, the wasting of a crumb. Your sour ingredient I'll leave out as I feed my mouth with untarnished, glorious cake. A cake that stands alone without conscience born in tin. Blind to your bucket, deaf to your calling. The cake needs no filling, no fancy icing. The cake in my mouth tastes no better for your pleading. As my cake goes in my mouth this sunny morning, ignorant or untarnished by your pathetic status quo, tastelessness, charity, leave it out. Never wears shorts. 
is never going to tell you how hot it is. Martin smells of Martin, stand beside him fat Martin, fill his pockets, filch his chips, crush his crisp, every cavity falls, such all sports by beds by cabinet, sweets and stavers, feel and grab your cough sometimes, feeling all we on, wanting to know if the world still spins round, or at best he might have stopped. His dog ripped his shirt once, I saw the blue, the black, the yellow, red and purple of his flabby biceps. He covered them up quick. There's nothing you need to know, and you'll never hear him say, it's a good day, or at the third B, it will be 9.21. B, B, B. <laughs> But a lot of us are having problems right now with universal credit. I'm sure you've heard about what the Tories are doing to us, taking forward the Labour Party uh, policy. Um, Saw so straight to the DWP, the Department of Work and Pensions. Last night I had a dream about the DWP. I dreamt about the DWP last night, the Department of What and Party. <laughs> Where the fussy old civil service dictat commands their stars all lines with What? Or Party. What they say? You want more? Pardon us. We don't need more. They say What? Your payment is 12 weeks in the rears? Pardon us, but who's getting it anyway? <laughs> what did... What did... They say? We made it go to a food bank? Pardon us, whose embarrassment is that? <laughs> and they say, what? We're wanting help with budgeting. Pardon us, what we should do it. When did our staff have their training? What if, 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 if they say? If these French controls clean you? Pardon us, isn't that saving and proof at last that universal credit is working? <laughs> I love my poems end with death. No, not really. <laughs> I sometimes talk about sitting at home, smoking sleep. Yeah. I'm listening to a tacky 12 inch going round and round. Malcolm X. Malcolm X. Malcolm X said sitting there, the table doesn't make you a diner unless you eat some of what's on that plate. I first said I wonder what it would be like if Malcolm X had been a disabled person. Brother Malcolm wanted so much more than eat beans, wanted to do so much more than dine. <coughs> Brother Malcolm wanted to get in, he wanted to get to and get his feet under the table. Brother Malcolm wanted to know what his charges were, he didn't want to feel rush. Brother Malcolm wanted to use the loo, wanted to be a participant, a planner. Brother Malcolm wanted to be involved, he wanted to have his say. Brother Malcolm coolly wanted all those things denied him, he even rightfully wanted the right to fucking eat. Brother Malcolm agitated, Brother Malcolm stared, Brother Malcolm lifted, and then Brother Malcolm ate his beans. Was this Brother Malcolm? Malcolm X said, by any means necessary. If I could talk about an armed struggle, if I occasionally talk about an armed struggling the disabled people's movement, 
But the Dutch troops who sometimes think it's not a good idea that they'll give them a hand grenade. <laughs> we might be tempted to use it. Uh, this next one's about Saul. Saul was a big guy. But he had been okay for most of his life and worked here. It was full of achievements. Outside of the office where I used to work, there was a um, carton uh, to drape with box. It was Saul's box. It was, I think it was his idea to have a box. So this was called Saul's Box and it's about Saul. Here stands Saul's Box, screen full of files, recording, checks and balances, rent claims, rent arrears, housing data, papers neatly stacked, alphabetical, his full career here. Saul stands outside of his box, it's gold, puffed up, egotistical, proud, certificated, awarded for endeavour, a play of a year. His ribbon blue, his medal blinking. Saul readies his box, marked a proof for transport, ready to move on, redundant. He bought his father's house, he claims he kept his history, independence, future security. Saul lies inside his box, stiff, pallid, grey, colour of death, embalmed, textured like wax, his bones broken, breath stopped, his past behind him, work gone, strength and pride gone, he couldn't have it on, Saul's gone, moved on, had it on. Saul lies in his box, Saul lies. Thank you. Always want to be on stage and speak into the microphone. I'm going to invite her on stage. Right, Jane? And <laughs> thank you. Uh, she's here for a special reason. She's going to help you with audience participation. <laughs> We're all into that, yeah? Yeah. 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 Well, I'm going to say disabled person. And Jean's going to say, Keep clear. I'm going to say, disabled person. Jean's going to say, Keep clear. And we're also going to say, Keep clear. Thank you very much. <coughs> oh, wow, I can see you. Who's in the light <laughs> one? Is it near time to go? No, that's George helping the audience take part. Oh, thank you, George. <laughs> thank you. Disabled person. A verbal gaze, do not look, do not touch. Disabled person. I pass the path cross over, stay safe. <coughs> Disabled person. Does the rise make up excuses when you cannot lie? Disabled person. Escape their attention, you know what we're like. <laughs> I would like to talk to you. Disabled person. Send them off, clean you need to use your fucking barge hole. Disabled person. Show them the ignorance talk about the time you haven't got. Disabled person. Size so demands it isn't good for business, it causes only trouble. Disabled person. Don't below your desk, it's not your job, it's not on that place, Phil. Disabled person. Free the scene, they won't be back when you're back. Disabled person. Give them the slip the system it likes on a way. Disabled person. Keep telling them to run away, take their holiday, turn jobs, retire, but be clear, we just keep on coming.
uh, the coastal off the uh, L. Easy, easy, one, two, three. This is disability, discrimination based on impairment. Remember that. Disability is discrimination based on impairment, or racism, or racism. Easy, easy, one, two, three. This is disability, discrimination based on impairment. Discrimination's out there, it's not of us, it comes inside us, we internalize it, it causes us trouble. This is kind of like what it did to me. I chose a hat, white green floppy leather. Then it seemed the hat chose me, covering my eyes while I could not see, with those wanting to take a good look at me. I chose a cloak, thick, warm, dark velvet. Before it seemed that cloak chose me. Me and the hat and the cloak, the sight to see. Strange boy, concealed, hidden identity. I chose a boot or two, or if, or it or those boats chose me. Black galoshes up to my knee, and now. The blackness locked me out, so no one could see the scars that hid with the wounds deep inside of me. At home, alone, at night, I could throw the black out of the layer to go deep into naked darkness, alone to pick and scrape the clot that led me into the place no one could see, and there I'd writhe and scream and slide to remember the sticks that picked the flesh that hid my humanity. Quite depressing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I follow my poems on free, I only get paid for performance shows, so I'd like to thank the Amsterdam Art Fest uh, for asking me here. I follow my poems on free on disability arts online. Uh, I was sending disability arts online a poem a week, and remember I was a stammer. One day I got an email uh, from our editor, Colin Ambrook, who said he'd the performance poem, he got the ad and performed it and saying, What me? A stammer for you must be bloody joking, mate. <laughs> right over, we planted a seed. I can do that. Take some more. This is called Eugenically Euthanastical Murder. And it's dedicated to an organisation called Not Dead Yet UK. But <laughs> perhaps you'll understand it through the, the references. The trains. The trains. The trains are coming from old Rhineland, coming from Sweden, Canada, the United States, and latterly Japan. <laughs> The trains. The trains are coming to a town. A town near you, a town where you are known, a town where you can be found, a town where your door gets knocked on, a town through which they will lead you, a town where people will poke, a town where we heard laughter. These trains, these trains are coming. The trains are coming, the leaflets and the internet. The papers are full of trains, trains which are coming. You don't have to read it, you can hear it, you can see them on TV, you can feel it. These trains that are coming to your town, trains. Please don't clap the out when you open your page. Trains really are the coming, biased into life by public opinion, debated in the House of Lords, votes <laughs> done in the House of Commons. I have a smaller margin. These trains are coming, created by the best brains in science, designed and made for you and me and we alone, 
featuring history's triangles, remake into blue badges, they're on the side of the trains, these trains which are coming. The trains that are coming have come there. The trains are waiting, waiting to muffle the tapping of your sticks, the swishing of your wheels, waiting to silence your vices, the ones that told you trains are coming. The trains with one way on, the trains with no way on. The trains, the trains are coming, I've stopped there. The train is here in Street in the old town. Mm -hmm. Right, lesson from history. Keep on fighting fascism, keep on fighting Donald Trump, keep on fashion. <laughs> fighting them all. In case you don't know, um, people like me are often referred to as a case. My friend, my son, I'm listening, his name Paul Fagan, he's living on, in Ireland now. Right, tell me what case was. But he didn't tell me that he had a key. So in case you don't know if it is a key to growth that takes you from a child onward, there is also a case. A case to be made, a case to be closed, a case to be stored away, a case to be taken down, a case to be packed, a case to be emptied. These are things that identify a case. Are you? A case to be made, closed, stored, taken, packed, emptied, any of these. This is a key. The key that opens, the key that allows entry, the key that gives access, the key that finds you vibrant, engaged in life, the key to being free. You are not a case. You are not a key. You have the key. Find it, feel it, press it. Turn, push, do not let others make you, close you, put you away, take you where you do not want to go, pack you full of junk or empty you of all those things that are you, that you find when, when you found your key. I spent a weekend in an art conference in Barrow in Furness, Barrow in Furness, Buddhist town in England. Uh, scores highest in terms of heroin addicts. Scores fifth in derelict, what am I talking about, derelict people, disabled people. Um, Right, however, his first is course highest in natural beauty and diversity in terms of what they have available all around them. I identify myself as I identify myself here tonight as a standing poet and as a consequence of that five people came up to talk to me about communication problems, <laughs> dyslexia, dyspraxia, ADHD. I wrote them five haikus and I dedicated it to Swift with them. About halfway through, it talks about a secret power that stammerers have when you have a chronic stammerer when you can't say one syllable after another. And that secret power is people will come to you and tell you the dirtiest secret things that they know because they know as a fucking stammerer like that, you're not going to tell anybody else. <laughs> Useful secret power you find out about people. <laughs> this is a thing we can dedicate to all people with communication issues. I talk about roots with people who don't share them. We all come around. But there are those who talk with people who don't listen, many walls of fears. I have to listen to many people's issues. I cannot reply. 
I didn't mean wrong. It's, it's, I just needed a new warm Sean to talk at. Now I have advice, a reason to be talking. All of the walls are coming down. Thank you. I mean, I have a lot of approval from my friend when he was young, she had not done it. Uh, Wedding's <laughs> great, oh, you should listen to her sometime. Uh, so I'm going to end with an introduction. It's called A Perfect Shell. I wanted to give you something perfect. It's a small pink shell with the shell I found has been found to be lost. So I gave you my poetry instead. Thank you. Oh. I can also say thank you to Shani. I prepared an incomplete um, set list and Jenny kind of tree that was okay for me to add I don't know what it's doing, that's the kind of prepared for. So thank you for the access. <laughs> um, thank you to Kelly, who said I could come and stammer at you. <laughs>